What's up guys, it's Sean from Rags to Boss, and today we are going to talk about Safe Moon and their wild wind turbine claims, and why I can prove with math that this is complete BS and that there's no wind turbines in Gambia going to make Safe Moon holders rich. Now, the whole point about these wind turbines is if they are going to be cost effective. Never mind if they're going to be burning safe moon, blah, 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 because I have, I get this a lot in the comments, right? Yeah, but Sean, even if they're not effective, they're going to still burn safe moon. Okay, well, whose safe moon are we burning then? Are we burning your safe moon? <laughs> right, so the only way that, that these turbines can burn any safe moon for us, right, is if people are transacting with these turbines in a way that they have to pay with safe moon right and the only way to do that is if these turbines are selling electricity right right so on that basis there's there's gonna be no more from now on saying yeah but they're just gonna burn it yeah but okay whose safe moon are we burning then right if you want us to burn your safe moon fine we'll drain your wallet but that's not the way it's gonna work right so some safe moon is going to have to be bought on the open market presumably by the people buying the electricity generated by these turbines and that's what this video is about because we are going to take a look at this turbine technology and we are going to take a look at Gambia as a country and I'll explain to you mathematically why this is not possible. Right now the first video we're going to talk about is the Safe Moon Project Operation Phoenix reveal sorry Okay, let's play this. Now the issues with small turbines was in the past. They were significantly less usable than that of their larger siblings. But here at SafeMoon, an issue is just an excuse to innovate. And just as small plane wings have evolved over the years, so can the physical designs of turbines. Right, so this is actually the Semtiv turbine. Now, Semtiv is a completely different company that has nothing to do with SafeMoon. And I actually spoke to one of its founders, Sofia Garcia, and she told me that yes, SafeMoon actually ordered a couple of these from her, but they have no official dealings with SafeMoon other than that they purchased a few. Now, this is going to become important later. Now, let's just have a look at the company Semtiv. Meet an unreasonable venture. Semtiv. <laughs> that that kind of kills me already, but uh, okay, we'll get to that in a sec. So basically, they make these wind turbines, and she actually confirmed to me that the wind turbine in the video is her wind turbine, right? Okay, let's go back to the video for a second. One of the lined up for you guys. is pursuing out of Area 32 is that of surface manipulation. I'm going to have to read this from the teleprompter. One second is that of surface manipulation of the foils on smaller turbines through the use of hydrophilic and hydrophobic particles. This innovation for wind turbines is done by using unique micron and molecular level technology, making small wind turbine design even more efficient. Now, here they're actually showing a blade which is presumably off one of these wind turbines, right? However, Sophia from Semtiv confirmed to me that this is not one of her blades. So this is kind of way back where the BS radar in December kind of went off for me. Now, okay, let's just say that there is these wind turbines, right? So let's just go over and see what these wind turbines cost and what they do. So the cost of one of these Nimoy M's, and that is their top of the line one, and he Actually, John at South to Southwest talked about the Semtiv Nimoy M because he said it costs $14,000. So we know that's the M because that's the only Semtiv product that costs $14,980. He also talked about some of the other specs, 24 watt, 100 watt power delivery being one of them. Now, that's fine. So let's just go to the brochure for the Nemo M. Now, this is the Nemoy M brochure as you can see and these are the technical specs for it. Now we're going to analyze these technical specs because these are the key to where this whole thing goes wrong. Now 
As you can see, there is a graph for the power delivery. And on one axis, we have the meters per second wind speed. And in the other, we have the amount of watts being produced. Now, Semtiv claimed to have a nominal power output of 2400 watts. Now, the reason that this is in meters per second will become clear in a minute. You would say, put it in miles an hour, kilometers even. Okay. Now, we are now going to look at the average wind speed in Gambia. Now, the average wind speed in Gambia is 5 miles an hour or 7 kilometers an hour. So, if we look at 7 kilometers an hour in meters per second, Google will tell us that this is 1.94 meters a second. If we then go back to the Semtiv brochure, we will see that that ends us here in the graph, right around 2. Let's call it 2. Let's be sportive. Now, this doesn't even really give us an output reading because the, the nominal amount is all the way up here, right, at 11 meters a second, or 12 meters, let's say 11 and a half meters a second. Now, if we put in 11 and a half, we're going to get to 39 kilometers an hour. Something that never happens in Gambia. It literally never happens. Actually, there's very little chance of this happening anywhere else, to be completely honest. Because in Chicago, the Windy City, we only get to about 16 kilometers an hour, which would be 4.4 meters a second. Putting us somewhere here, still nowhere near the amount needed. Now, you can check this for yourself. Uh, I mean, it says here the cut-in speed is 5 kilometers an hour and the no nominal speed is 40 kilometers an hour, right? So the nominal speed here is 40 kilometers an hour. Let's just put in the average wind speed for where I am in Holland. Holland average wind speed. And... Strong breezes are defined, blah, blah. so the average is 13.3 kilometers an hour. So keep in mind that is a very high amount. All right, so 13 kilometers an hour is still only about 3.6. Now keep in mind, Holland is a country that actually invented the windmill, not the wind turbine, the windmill. We have loads of windmills all over the place. We also have loads of wind turbines all over the place. All are doing pretty well, but these are big wind turbines, not the small wind turbines they're trying to pedal. And obviously, as you can see, even in Holland at 3.6, this would still be only about a third up to 600 watts. So at two, let's be generous and say that this is about 100 watts. Let's call it 100 watts. Let's be generous. Now let's just go calculator. Now, what we now need to do to get to a dollar amount per year is the following. We're going to take that 100 watts and we are going to times it by 24 because keep in mind, this is actually a tenth of a kilowatt hour. A kilowatt hour being a thousand watts constant during one hour. But we are now going to do this times 24. This will then bring us to 2400 watts. Or uh, 2.4 kilowatt hours, right? So 2.4 kilowatt hours. Oh, let's just get rid of this. Help. 2.4 times 365 is 876 kilowatt hours. Now, the average price of electricity in Gambia is quite high. And I suspect that this is the reason that they went for an energy product to make it kind of kind of believable. Okay, the average cost per kilowatt hour in Gambia is $23. So we're going to times this 0 0.23, bring us to 
brings us to $201. Now $201 is actually still quite generous. I'll tell you why, because this is what the average Gambian actually pays for electricity. But you're talking about network costs, etc. So look, you cannot become your own energy company and just say, hey, we're going to charge you $23 cents because that energy needs to be transported over the government network. And actually, it's more logical that you're paying about, uh, you're getting about a third for your produced electricity and the rest goes to taxes and network transportation fees. Now, that's the way it works in Holland anyway. I think that's the way it works pretty much all over the world in so, more or less, but okay. Just to be completely fair and have no discussion afterwards, I'm going to leave it at $201. $201 is what we would get a year, a year from this turbine, right? Now let's take approximately 14,000. Now I'm going to even round it down there, divide it by $201. This will ROI this turbine in 69 years. Now, just this fact, and I have calculated this before, just this fact makes this whole thing BS. And Gambia is a com country where the sun shines almost all day long. Right, now this is where we come to the whole nanoparticle story, right? And okay, let's just jump back into the Safe Moon video and hear what John has to say about that. Hydrophilic surfaces pattern and apply on a foil wing or turbine blade can be integrated to produce a greater interface with the active motion of the wind. This changes the losses of energy due to chaotic flows into controlled forces of kinetic motion over the turbine blades. This transfer of energy is enhanced by the surface patterning of the hydrophilic and hydrophobic coating. The technology lends to the ability to change traditional... Right, so we're talking about some kind of nano coating that they're going to use to make these turbines up to 10 times more efficient. Now, let's see what they have to say about that. Here, in the Safe Moon Sunday of the 9th of January. Yeah, we can't really talk about that right now. Uh, but. So a little bit of an Operation Phoenix breakdown. Um, so the recent video that I put out kind of went over the nanotechnology and how things are done. Uh, the best analogy that I can use right now is, let's say you have this box. You've got a sledgehammer, and then you've got a, uh, a letter opener. The sledgehammer will open up the box, but the letter opener is the better tool. Yeah. So you want to use the letter opener. The technology that we're doing allows us to have a more... Um, let's say, uh, targeted approach to interacting with the air. So basically we're able to interact the air, interact and control the air around the surface by using micro and molecular level particles. Wow. And uh, by the way, that technology is currently patent pending. Patent pending, you say, John? Wow, that's great news, by the, by the way. Look at Fudan. Look at Fudan looking like, oh, I didn't know about this. <laughs> right, let's go to the US Patent Database Office, USPTO Patent Office. And we actually did a full search and we did a search for SafeMoon and we came up with no patents have matched your query. Now, I have had many discussions with SafeMoon Army members on this. Show me the patent numbers. Okay. Then there was the case of Safe Moon Joe trying to dispel my FUD. Here we go, Safe Moon Joe, because I actually did make a film about this earlier. It was a bit low quality, so it's no longer on the channel, that's why I'm making this. Um, this is what Safe Moon Joe has to say about my FUD and about the patents. Here we go. So let me help instill your confidence. Right out the gate, the first thing he talks about is the Safe Moon patents. Where are the patents, he says, because once again, he didn't find them. And hey, let me help you out there, buddy. We have patents. Dear Safe Moon Joe, there is a difference between trademarks and 
patents. I can go to the trademark office right now and trademark whatever the hell I want. I can trademark hydrophobic, phallic, delic windmill coatings and they would just say fine. However, this is different than a patent because in a patent you actually have to show what you have done, why, why this technology should be patented and if that is complete BS and you've just made it up, they will just tell you to piss off. However, if you try to register a trademark, and a trademark is just basically registering a name, you can do that without any technical information. Coca-Cola, whatever, trademark, whatever, you know, that doesn't matter. It's, it's just the name. It has nothing to do with the actual invention. There is no patent number for this windmill nano BS technology. Prove me wrong. I've said this before. Show me a patent number. Go to the Discord of SafeMoon. Ask John. Hey John, you said there was a patent. What's the patent number, mate? He won't be able to tell you and they'll throw you off Discord. Right. Okay. So basically, just to sum it up, it'll take you 69 years to pay back one $14,000 turbine if you put it in Gambia. Also, John has talked about giving away this, this energy for next to nothing and still make a giant profit. As you see, even if you're paying, even if the people of Gambia are paying complete retail and you are getting all of that money, you are still not going to ROI. So this whole Safe Moon Project Phoenix thing is complete BS. It is not going to make Safe Moon any money. It's not going to make you any reflections. Forget about it. Now what I want you guys to do is to go onto the Discord and ask questions. Be critical. It's your investment. I'm asking questions for you guys and I don't even have any SafeMoon. It's your investment. Go to SafeMoon. It's your right. Ask them. How is this possible? How are these wind turbines going to ROI? What is the patent number on the nanotechnology? And see what they say. And I bet they're not going to be able to say anything because I've asked these questions and I have since been removed from their Discord. Right, guys, if you want more Safe Moon updates, more Safe Moon news, give me a subscribe, give me a like if you like this video, and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.